So, when the crisis kicks off, everybody starts to price nationally what was held to be one common bond. Suddenly, those bank funding structures which use the sovereign debt to fund themselves becomes really risky because what do the rating agencies do? They start to downgrade the sovereign debt, which means that you're downgrading the assets that the entire banking system of Europe is based upon. Whoops! What does this do? By 2011, it shows us these are the combined consolidated claims, holdings of assets, of France, the Netherlands, Portugal, interestingly, and Germany on Greece, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, and Spain, right? So basically, this is how much stuff from the south is on the balance sheet of those banks. Have a look at France. 33% of GDP, equivalent value to one third of the size of the French economy, is basically crappy assets from the south. 20% in the case of Germany. So this is a banking crisis. It's always been a banking crisis. Have a look at this, ugly but informative. Share lent to the troubled south in total lending by each country. Notice how there's hardly anything going in 97. The euro comes in, boom. Suddenly the Germans are given 20% of their total lending out to the periphery. And look at the periphery, what are they doing? Greece is getting 40% of its lending from the core. So what happens in Germany is you've got a bunch of old people who save too much. They take it to the Sparkasse. The Sparkasse gives it to Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank buys Greek debt with it. And then that basically sends money to the South to buy German products. And it was all working so well until the Americans had a financial crisis and screwed the whole thing up. Because then the capital flows from North to South stopped. It's called a sudden stop. And the whole thing comes out of kilter. Because all that funding for lending that the banks are doing, you now have a credit crunch. How are you going to fund yourself when you're levered 40 to 1 and your underlying base capital's lost value? This is the real reason we bailed out the periphery. You hear all the stuff about what we gave to Greece, what we gave to Portugal, blah, 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 the rest of it. Have a look at this. Periphery lending was indirect bank bailouts to the core banks for prior overlending to the periphery. Greece got 274.5 billion. Ireland, 85, and another 47 in promissory notes, blah, 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 490. 420 went right back to the banks. It was a bank bailout. That was it. it. You couldn't tell your public. right? You couldn't actually come out and say, actually, what we're really doing is bailing out Commerce Bank. How do you feel about that? No, we have to invent this narrative about the Greeks being lazy and so on and so forth. So you poison the well of European politics because you can't tell the truth about a bank bailout. So this creates a very interesting problem. Whereas the Americans had a too big to fail problem or too big to jail, what you've got in Europe is a too big to bail problem because you've got an entire interlinked financial sector right across the whole continent, and everybody's borrowing in a currency that none of them get to print. That's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a Latin America type problem where everybody's borrowing dollars, and then you're using your own local currency. So when funding dries up for these banks, this isn't one country's problem. This is a continental problem, but there's no continental institutions to deal with it, except the ECB, who under Trichet think that they're still fighting an inflation from the 1920s, and their job is not to act as a lender of last resort. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of a crisis. Now, for comparison, here's the too-big-to-fail too USA. So there's American GDP in 2012, and here's the assets of their banking sector. So the top five banks basically come to about 61% of GDP. You have your own currency. It's the dollar. Everybody wants to hold it. Remarkable thing about the crisis. Started in the United States, the dollar went up during the crisis because it's all anybody wanted to hold. Remarkable thing number two, despite being the source of this financial crisis, yields on 10-year treasuries have went down and down and down and down since 2006 because it's all people want to hold. Now, at the end of the day, if one of those banks goes over, it's going to be ugly for the United States. It could take out 10% of GDP, but it's 10% of 17 trillion. And they get to print the global reserve asset. And they are under no illusions whatsoever about the function of a central bank, which is a lender of last resort. Have a look at France. There's French GDP. There's the top three bank assets. There's total bank assets. They don't have a printing press. That's a problem. And that was a continent-wide problem, because who's going to bail a system that's too big to bail? Total bank assets, GDP for the Eurozone, including the Brits. That's how big your financial sector is relative to your economy. So sympathy for the Germans here. Think about this for a moment. 2012, total bank assets for the EU are about 44 trillion euros. The underlying economies are about 16 trillion. The German economy is about 3.5 trillion. 
How on earth does three and a half bail 44? It's not going to do it. So the Germans have been playing the simple game. Squeeze, add liquidity, and pray. And that's what we've been doing.